So you talk about modernizing the short game. Could you just sort of compare and contrast or juxtapose what the modern tour player knows and what it has been taught for however, what, last 20, 40, 40 years, yeah. you know, to, to us amateurs and how, how different, you know, what a different game we're, we're playing. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of variables to that. I'd say one of the variables is in the last 40 years, the agronomy has changed quite a bit, right? So we used to go from like grass that was pretty thick um, and, and I would say fairly soft uh, to now grass that's pretty tight, fairly firm. And that's, that's with all these collection areas and these runoffs. So like I, I, I got to hang a little bit with Jack Nicholas at this, at this pro-am a couple months ago. And I asked him, I said, Jack, in your heyday, what was, what was your gamer, your lob wedge? What? He said it was 58 degrees with 17 degrees of bounce. Ooh. 17 yeah. degrees of bounce. Not one, not one club company on the market makes something with 17 degrees of bounce currently. Mm -hmm. But that was standard back then. So 17 degrees of bounce, right? You're thinking he, he's in thicker grass, right? The, the grass that he's playing on is thicker. The lies that he's playing on are probably softer. And so that 17 degrees of bounce was what, was what he was using. That was necessary for that time. Now, with grass being cut so much tighter, uh, things being so much firmer, we want lower bounce. And, and for us now, that you have to you know, take into account what's going to work in those type of situations, right? And so you move into guys now that are using like four degrees of bounce. We saw Keith Mitchell using a T-grind, four degrees of bounce, and still gliding on the top of the turf. So as the agronomy has changed, so has the equipment. The equipment has changed, so have the techniques. And so that's sort of the, the whole circle of it all. And, and the instruction part of it is a little bit late to catch up. That's, that's sort of the feeling. The, the, the instruction part of it is still stuck back in like, hey, let's look at what Seve did or what Jack did around the greens. And it's like, yeah, you can look at that, but that's not what the modern player is doing because the, the conditions aren't asking the modern player to hit those kinds of shots anymore. The conditions are asking the modern player to hit the shallow floaty pitch shot with a bunch of spin on it. They're not asking the modern player to hit the, the stab and check and run out, right? Because again, green speeds have also changed. They've gone from nine 40 years ago to now, I think this week they're running at 13. Mm. Like it's a, that's a big difference. You mm. have to be able to spin the ball and you have to be able to get the ball to land softly to be able to, uh, to, to use that spin to actually grab. So that's interesting. So there's a trickle down effect of the arena. The arena that we play on is changing. Yep. And then therefore the tools that we have to use have changed. And then the instruction and then the change. instruction has to change. Right. So, similar to like a uh, drivers, right? Drivers and ballada balls. Mm -hmm. When you had the ballada balls and the wooden drivers, you weren't taught to hit up on it. If you hit up on it, that thing was sailing. Right, you were taught to basically have either a level swing or almost hit a little down on it. Nowadays, if you hit down on it, you're losing 20 yards, 30 yards. Yeah. So you got to start hitting, you got to start learning how to hit up on it because the ball wants you to do that, and the club heads want you to hit up on it too. So as things change, you know, in, in the last few years, we've really seen uh, the narrative change with how you hit your driver. It's not swing level; it's hit up on it. The narrative with short game hasn't quite caught up yet. And I'm, I'm trying to be one of those people who are trying to be the guy that's, that's bringing the short game into, into the new age. Yeah. How did these narratives, especially on tour, how did they, how did they start? Like, like what's the genesis of, of this kind of package? So, I mean, just if we had to summarize it, it's like your hands aren't ahead. Your hands are sort of neutral mm -hmm. you know you're not leading the leading edge you're using the bounce yeah. you're not you know uh putting a ton of spin on the ball you're sort of controlling release like when did you see that start on tour and how does it then sort of disseminate throughout all the top players it definitely it definitely started becoming more of a thing when in i think it was like oh nine when they changed the grooves 
right on the okay. wedges the yeah. wedges went from those bigger grooves and they started to shrink them that was sort of like the usga changed all that once that happened the guys that played the kind of stab and check type of a shot it wasn't checking anymore so you would hit it hit it in their low leading edge and it would bounce 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 and then finally check but you're already 10 to 12 feet past the hole and so you had to learn how to get this thing to go more this way with some grab and that's where shallow angle of attack using the bounce all that type of stuff started to to become more of a factor um but there's been guys throughout history that have that have used the bounce really well um but i don't think it really became in vogue until the groove started to change then you started to have some play you, you started to have some players that were trying to implement some new techniques and and then now i think guys just sort of look around and they're like you look at a guy like cameron young and you're like how does he do that <laughs> yeah how does he hit the one that goes up high and then has a ton of spin on it um what it, what are the things that he's doing like i want to be like that like guys guys will look guys will stand there and watch and be like how do you hit that how do you hit that shot talk me through that and and that's just sort of like that's how the tour kind of works and everyone kind of you know it, everyone sort of works in that direction and y you you find certain things that guys do really well like tiger stinger right it was like man now it's like there's a lot of guys that know how to hit a stinger now yeah. because tiger sort of popularized it um and similar with similar with with short game i think someone like a steve stricker is is much more uh the w probably one of the forefathers of like the modern way of of pitching a golf ball right being really shallow through it took the hands out taking taking some of the hands out and and being really efficient with his distance control yeah. and i think that's i would say you know someone like that you know and and where i learned a lot of my stuff was from paul azinger and and he he dug it out of the dirt he had a couple of mentors but for the most part he dug it out of the dirt so zinger zinger brought a lot of this on oh zinger was a huge influence on 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 me personally and on my golf game and on my golf knowledge and just my golf iq in general and um yeah i i was you know my sort of journey through golf was sort of on this trajectory here and then i ended up winning and then i sort of went in a wrong direction as as far as my technique for my full swing went um and lost my feels, lost my card, lost my way as far as directionally where I was going with my swing and directionally where the golf ball was going. No idea where it was going for a number of years. And ended up reconnecting with Paul and he said, you know, you've got too many cobwebs up in your up in your brain. Like come to Florida, hang out with me and I think I can help clear some of those cobwebs out. And so probably you know went back to his house you know six seven times six uh six or seven years for probably two three times a year and just we we would just talk and we'd play golf i would drive my rental car because when i when i first went to his house he, d he didn't own a car he had like 10 or 12 motorcycles but did not own a car and so he's like all right you're driving i'm like in my crappy rental car you want me to drive <laughs> yeah come on so anyway i'd i'd get in the car and he'd be in the passenger seat and we we would drive 40 minutes out to the golf course and we would then um you know we would we would play 27 holes and we would talk and we would talk all the way there about rider cup and mental attitude and mental toughness and breathing techniques and all these really interesting things that um you know as a player it's just nice to have a reminder of of things like that that you know i had gone so far deep down the rabbit hole of technique and and, and putting the club in a certain spot that i forgot about some of these things about how to actually play the game mm -hmm. and so paul helped remind me of a lot of those things and just helped take me out of a really a, a dark sort of place with my professional life and um, which led into personal life. And, and it was a, he was a massive influence on me. And a lot of my short game theories, the, you asked where the genesis came from, a lot of my short game theories, the genesis came from my conversations with Paul.